Welcome to this episode of Think uh, Business Live with my friend Karen Larson, lmstudio.com. Um, Karen, it's great to connect with you. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you today because because you know it is. God, I, you know, I, I keep on forgetting the day, June 11th, 2020, and um, you know we're we're getting back to work, and uh, thankfully, which is great. I actually had my first face-to-face -face meeting this morning uh, with clients, which felt great. And um, I've got another one right after this call. And 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 branding is really important today. And you're a branding specialist. Um, and it's about branding to retain clients post-COVID. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to jumping into a discussion on that. So you know, before we before we dive in, what what should companies be thinking about right now when it comes to branding and retention. My last thought is I think the last couple months people have been very, um, nobody really knew what to brand, what to say. I shouldn't say nobody, but many people didn't know what to do. They were, um, so as far as really selling, right? Like really just getting right. your brand. So, you know, so where are we today and where, where are we going? Help us, help us, Karen, help us. Okay. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, client retention right now, over the last couple of years, it's really been at an all-time low to begin with. So now the fact that we have been kind of, I want to say, off for the last three months because people have been truly just focusing on what has to get done for the job. If they haven't been off work, they've been just focusing on what has to get done for the job. Yeah. They haven't really been focusing on growing their business in any way. Um, so what happens is when you're out of sight, out of mind, people forget about you. Yeah. They are going to, they're going to go off and go, you know, to the person who has been reaching out to them. So now more than ever, cu customers have to, or clients need to start communicating with their customers, letting them know they're back in business. I'm also going to see my first customer today. Yeah. Um, first, first time in months. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind right, of so weird. Let's, let's talk about that, Karen, because that you, you bring up a really um, um, one of my favorite lines, which is out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that happens, that happens, uh, and that happens on any given day in any market. So, you know, what's the shelf life of, uh, you know, that, you know, before out of, out of sight, out of mind picks up, you know, as a business coach, I see all the time, well, I call my client once a year or I call my client once a quarter. Well, in my opinion, that's like, that's dog years, right? Because right. I mean, I that, and I agree with you. I, I, I have heard time and time and time again, if I, I hear this all the time, people will say to me, I've been doing business with XYZ client for years. I've done tons of business with XYZ client. They go six months, eight months, whatever, without calling. That that client does business with somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after, and they say, well, why didn't you do it? And they say, well, I haven't heard from you. So I just did business with the most recent person that called me. Right. Right. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. I, I hear that. I was, and Karen, I'm going to let you talk about it, but I would say I hear that every week. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, now we're dealing with everyone for three months. It's been this way. Right. Everyone's kind of been off. They've, like I said, they've only been dealing with in kind of in crisis mode, only dealing with what they have to deal with. So that question of, you know, how often do you need to reach out to clients? You need to reach out clients nowadays, what it can be an extremely soft touch once a week through social media, once a um, you know, once every couple weeks via an email blast at the really at the minimum, once every couple weeks with an email blast. It doesn't have to be picking up the phone all the time, they just need to be a touch tone touchstone that you are still available and out there for them. Well, now you're talking about editorial calendar, consistency, yeah. predictability. Absolutely. You know, things I have always, you know, back, so I'm 48 and, you know, growing up, we had about three, four, five channels on our television. 
and everything you, you know you used the TV guide to see what was on. You could remember what channel was what because everything had a specific time slot and there was predictability built into our days. Right. And, and, and today, not, not at all. I mean, most people don't know what station things are on. And so what you're talking about is bringing back some old school, not only consistency, but predictability. And yeah. so, that's, so now reverse engineer that for um, the listeners. How do you build that? Well, just like you um, said, it is really about building an engine and building a that content calendar. Right. And as you, uh, I'm a designer as well as a strategist, so my what I like to do is I like to go in, get a big picture view of what the client um, offers, and then break it down and figure out okay, who are your clients? Who are who is your perfect client? That's the most important question that you need to ask. And then you drill down and say, how am I going to come? <laughs> That's my dog, uh, yeah. Ali and Cooper. So I'm going to shut my door. Keep on talking, Kim. Go away from me. Okay. So the main thing is you need to first figure out who ex who your perfect client is. You don't want to make it too broad. The more you can narrow it down, who your client is, the more you can drill down into the perfect message. Then you end up looking at who your client is and how do they want to be communicated to? Is right. your perfect client a retired per somebody who's getting ready to retire? Are they looking at their email all the time? Or are they a millennial that is on their phone nonstop, on social media, on things like that? So these are the type of questions you have to initially ask before you then figure out how you're going to communicate and then how often you're going to communicate. Well, let's talk. Let's, I, I just want to kind of dive into the word communicate because mm -hmm. um, a word that I like using is um, messaging. Yes. But, but in today's world, we, we everybody must be um, increase their uh, effective communication skills. Mm -hmm. you know, in today's world, more important than ever, you know, we've got to have more empathy. We've got to be effective communicators when it comes to empathy, when it comes to gratitude, um, when it comes to accountability for ourselves and the value that we bring to clients. No and question. So, and so... As you're communicating, as you're messaging to people, I think sometimes people over message. So how do you get clear? You know, I, I see a lot of companies, they've got so many messages and some of them all kind of fall into place and make sense, right? They're tentacles. And some of them can never really get into alignment. Right. So, so what is the, what, you know, guide us? Well, the first thing I think that you want to think about is, you know, you want clients to be aligned with you. So that means you need to understand what your core values are first as a company. And then you need to align those with your, again, your perfect client. Yeah. And that is what's going to make the kind of the magic happen. Right. Um, so that messaging, you're absolutely right. It has to be empathetic, but it also has to draw them in in a way that they're kind of going to fall in love with you. Right. You know, so if, for example, like a visceral, like love and a visceral connection, yeah, you know, absolutely. Right. I mean, you know, they say you have seven seconds to make a first impression. And so right. you, you, you know, sometimes I see, you know, it's like you, you got to do something that's going to connect with them emotionally. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Like, like John, you know, me, I mean, we joke, kind of this business on one side, right. sass on another. Right, right. I want my clients to know that that's what I'm like. Because if they can't handle a little bit of sass, they're probably not going to want to work with me. Yeah. But if they can, then we're going to fall in love with each other. Right. Your clients so, cannot be sassless. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. Okay. <laughs> So, so, you know, if you're a brand that, you know, you want to be true to yourself and yeah. you want your branding and your social media to be true to who you are. And sometimes it's just, you know, 
we a picture says a, is a thousand words. You know, it says a thousand words. It doesn't have to be this hard sell. It's a you know people react to visuals and emotional res responses much better, and they're gonna fall in love with you in a much um, more, like you said, visceral way right. than a hard sell. Yeah, yeah, and and, and nobody likes that. nowadays. Nobody likes a hard sell. Nobody likes a hard sell. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't work? To, I mean, to me, it doesn't. Not for long term. Not if you're trying to build credibility um, and 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 invest in relationship capital. You know, it takes three years to be an overnight success, and you got to do a lot of work while you're uh, while you're doing that. Let's talk Absolutely. about let's talk about continuity. I'm a big fan of things that compound over time. You know, there's nothing we don't most uh, things don't go viral overnight. Uh, mm -hmm. Most nothing happens overnight. And mm -hmm. we, and so and so how do what what does consistency look like when you're talking about branding? There's two different paths there, there but they have again have to be in a line. First, there is the messaging has to be consistent. It uh -huh. has to, the brand has a tone. It has to have a consistent tone and, um, you know, a, a, a personality to the messaging. Yeah. But then same thing with your, your visuals. And the visuals are even more important to be, it has to be consistent. If it's not, if you, if I create a beautiful brand for somebody and, you know, they start putting out, a consistent look and feel at first and then it kind of starts falling off because maybe they start doing it themselves or maybe they have you know they don't follow the brand guidelines that have been provided to them that consistency falls off and yeah. their customers are kind of like what's going on it doesn't they don't seem you know very solid so the more consistent your branding is as far as your messaging and your visual branding goes the more solid and consistent you appear to a client yeah that's well said you know and i and i and i wonder sometimes how many companies actually have brand guidelines right um, because i think sometimes you know i'll be in companies and and the branding person will come in and they'll say we need to create a brand you know i don't know what you call it like a like a master booklet right mm -hmm. where but, and some companies will say, well, I don't want to, we don't need that. I don't want to invest in that, but it's, it's a pretty necessary thing. So there's consistency. Well, so can you talk a little bit about, you know, creating, what do you call it? What do you call it? I can't think of it off the top of my head. Brand guidelines. Well, yeah, but it's pretty much or, um, is it like a book or something, blah, blah, blah. No, brand right, guidelines. So we'll stick to brand. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll stick to brand guidelines. All right. So. So, but, but can I back what up? Like, what does brand what, guidelines mean? Okay, what that means is um, it can be a one pager, it can be a 50 pager, but basically what is in brand guidelines, the most basic of brand guidelines is, shows you how the, lo how the logo is supposed to work as far as what the color schemes are, what the font choices are, or print use and web use, because sometimes that might be different. Yeah. What um, photographic styles or illustration styles, for example, if the brand is only gonna use black and white images, what type, some sample images as to what those are gonna look like. Um, how, um, how social media banners are should look and how the fonts and the logos should be used on social media. That's the most, these are the most basic things. And then also you get into what the messaging is going to sound like. We get back to that tone, specific words that represent the company. Um, any, the whole purpose of this brand guide is to be able to, for any designer or any writer to come in and quickly look at the brand guidelines and design something that looks like it came from that company. Yeah. And no, and it doesn't look like this designer did it or this designer. It, you know, any good designer should be able to do that. The problem is, the number one problem is, is kind of everybody thinks they're a designer nowadays or everybody thinks they're a writer nowadays. 
and they really don't respect those brand guidelines. And that's the number one problem, in my opinion. You know, but if, if a company has even the most basic one sheet, there's no reason that a good designer can't take that and, you know, run with it as long as they stick within the guidelines, yeah. following the fonts, following the colors and following the, um, the photographic styles as far as the visual goes. And then as far as the tone goes in the messaging, following the styles that have been determined there. All right. All right, good. Well said. So companies sitting here listening and they're thinking, okay, I know I got to get my arms wrapped around a lot of the stuff that Karen's talking about. What are the two or three things that they need to um, do to get started? The first thing that they need to do, and it's so basic, is to know where your logos are. And if you don't know in your system where your logos are, then have somebody rebuild your logos for you. And when I say that is rebuild them in um, a vector format that you can then give to and share with anyone that needs to resize your logos for any kind of promotional materials, things like that. Yeah. But also, you know, determine what are your colors? What are the fonts that you use on your website and in print? If somebody's going to go off and do social media, they should be using specific fonts. It's very important for visual consistency. Um, so looking at some real, those basic things um, is very quick and easy to do. But it's, it's amazing how people don't know where their logos are. And that's usually the biggest problem. Wow. And now what's the next, what's the second and third thing? The um, I actually... Really looking, it's a much, this is where you get into a much bigger thing. And it's really looking at your overall company strategy and who are you communicating with? And that's where, you know, you have to sit down and with all of the decision makers in the company and the and a con brand consultant and strategist and look at it from a big picture perspective and figure out, who are you communicating to? What are you doing now and what do you need to do? And that's a bigger issue, but it's, um, you can't really do branding. You can't do your branding without it. Yeah, 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 well said, well said. Um, let me ask you a question. So a company is um, looking at their branding and saying, we've been doing it this way for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Um, we, you know, we thought we were modern and innovative and we realized once COVID hit, we're not right. We need to, we need a refresh. I'm hearing that a lot from companies all over the country that I'm talking to internationally as well. And so, you know, what are, what do you, what, how does a company look at rebranding, not so much rebranding, but refreshing their brand to, you know, studies show that by 2025, 75% of the global workforce will be millennials. And so they've, you know, companies are realizing they got to freshen up for the millennial and the Gen Z generations, which are their, which are their clients around the corner. So how, how do you do that? Um, start by the strategy, start by looking at who your, who your current audience is and looking at who your audience is going to be in the next five years and build your brand, rebrand yourself based on yeah. that. You know, you have to look, you have to be future forward. Yeah. So you can't look, you cannot look behind. And really nowadays everything's changing. It used to be, you know, five, 10 years. Now everything's changing three years. Yeah. Three years seems to be the magic number. Um, I, would say, I would say that that's even up for debate and it's almost you still got to reverse you can I think and I see this in businesses right it's hard to have a 10 year plan when they say 85% of the jobs that exist in 2030 don't exist today so you can have a 10 year plan you can have a BHAG but really it's I think it's, it's really hard to make that 10 year plan you reverse engineer to a five year plan I think that's even hard because the yeah. models are like I just said going to occupy 75% of the workforce and it's going to change the landscape, mm -hmm. right? And then you reverse engineer three years, three years is manageable, but then you got to really kind of reverse engineer it 
to the year, to the quarter, to the month, to the day, and be nimble and adapt like we've, like we've never adapted before. Now, I mean, honestly, you need to, look, as far as I'm concerned, we need to have, everybody needs to be looking at what are you going to do, be doing in three months? What are you going to do? You have to three have months, three that months. That was my next question. Like a three month plan. Yep. Because what are you going to do when nothing, fr nothing kind of like frustrated me more when all of this started back in March that people were kind of like, well, we're just going to close down or we're going to only do the minimum because this was the perfect time to do those projects that um, everybody said they didn't have time to get to. And one of those projects is their rebrand. But you know what? I'm going to say this. Um, I saw a lot of companies do what you said. I saw a lot of companies do what I'm about to say. Double down, triple down, quadruple down on your brand. Now is the time to build your brand like never before. Like never before. Like and never before. Before. what's going to happen in three yeah. months? Kind yeah. of, you know, it, you, you just experienced what happened. There's a good chance that we're going to have an uptick again come the fall, whatever, what all of the experts are saying. So kind of plan for it. Plan that um, that calendar to figure out how are you going to communicate to your clients. And you might as well do it with an extremely beautiful, fresh approach yeah. that is going to show empathy and have them fall in love with you and know that you are there for them. Yeah. And, 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 and I want to talk about this before we kind of finish up because you have your, we're talking external brand, like make your clients fall in love with you. Yes. You have your internal brand, which is make your team be and stay in love with you. Because, yeah. you know, I think a lot of times companies spend so much time on, you know, oh, the client, the client, the client, when really it's it's people first. And COVID showed this, you know, in, in huge colors because if your people aren't happy, your the the business at the core begins to crumble. And right. so you have in you know as leaders, you have an internal brand and an external brand. Um, as people who work at companies, you have an internal brand. Uh, if you don't know what it is, just ask somebody. Um, <laughs> and, right. But and so, how do you build your internal brand, and how do you monitor your internal brand to make sure that it is consistent with your external brand? Right. Because you started out talking about, you know, branding to retain clients, but really it's also branding to retain your most important clients, which are your people. There's absolutely no question. Yeah. And especially with millennials. Correct. Um, so, I mean, you know me and you know, I culture is so important. Right. And with, you don't have, if you build a brand that, isn't based on a solid culture and everyone in that company buying into your brand and falling in love with you as a boss and right. you, um, and just loving the company, then you know you have to. It's ground. It's ground oh, up. Yeah, it's right. You know that's, that's for another talk, but it is real. You know, as leader. Yeah. You carry 95 percent of the culture drums to your beat, and Absolutely. so and so that is so important. And so I think a lot of times people forget about what their internal brand is. They spend a lot of time on their external brand, but it's as I've been in business over you know you know I've been in the business world thirty plus years. I've always looked at myself and companies and tried and done my best to manage my own internal brand as well as my external brand. So, um, yeah, I, it's, yeah. One, one thing it's so important, you know, a lot of companies, they think about the, they're all client or they're so client oriented and they build this brand. So focused on the customer. If the internal people don't buy into that vision, you're not going to get them to support and lift you up. Right. Well, the vision is key. so, you know, you yeah. you really need the company and employee buy-in yeah. for the brand before you roll it out. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you kind of, it's like you don't have the soldiers to go and fight for you right. as a company. Right. And that's, and your, and your clients can feel it when they walk in the, when they walk in. 
No I, can, I can walk in an office and feel when that's going on. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Dur yeah. One more thing. During this whole process of COVID and now what's happening with Black Lives Matters, it I have seen so many different people post how much they love and appreciate their companies for the support that um, their companies have given them with everything that has been going on. And when I see those kind of posts, it, it just gives me chills. Yeah. No, it's like, I, it's I, the I, best branding ever. Yeah. I actually, uh, when COVID hits, uh, the first, you know, I would say five, six weeks of it where there, the fear was at its highest and nobody knew what tomorrow was going to bring. I was doing workshops all over the country for companies just to kind of work with them on how to take care of themselves. It was like, here's a personal business plan to, to, to nurture yourself because the companies were so focused on making sure their people had the right mindset and could balance their family and, and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, moving on um, uh, to a little bit of a speed round, Karen. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, what is, um, when you, you know, a lot of people who are graduating college right now um, are not graduating with the, the, in the, in a world that they thought they were going to three or four months ago. What's one piece of advice that you would give a college graduate as we sit here June 11th, 2020? Um, find a good mentor or mentors, find multiple mentors yeah. um, that can, and and be extremely open minded because you just never know what type of opportunities are going to come up. Right. But as far as the mentors you find, um, make sure you know make sure they have the same value system that you have. Yeah. Because otherwise, they there's a chance they could guide you in a direction that might not be for you. No, yeah, you got to listen to your gut. I, I would say that's uh, that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So I'm going to ask everybody, I'm going to ask you to kind of tell people how they can get a hold of you. But I started wearing just T-shirts, black T-shirts. And then I bought a bunch of T-shirts that have a bunch of charities on them that I wear every day now. So I'm going to give a little shout out to Born born and Raised Detroit is my charity of the day. I'm going to tell you what's all about real quickly. Born and Raised Detroit Foundation 501c3 supports initiatives that contribute to building a stronger community and positive way of life for youth of Detroit. We believe that an inspired, educated, and creative youth is the key to our city's progression. We are 100% volunteer and 100% of the proceeds go to empowering the upcoming generation of young Detroiters. So I love that. And um, if you wanna learn more about it, you can actually go to their website, which um, I don't know what it is. Oh, bornandraiseddetroit.org. So I just wanna give a little shout out to this. Um, tell people how they can get a hold of you. They can get a hold of me through lmstudio.com. And my email address is larson at lmstudio.com. All right. Karen, All right. Um, always love your um, your insight and your wisdom on things. Thank you very much to everybody listening. Thank, thank you very you. much. Um, stay positive, uh, stay safe, stay in the game, and, uh, and continue to think big. Karen, thanks so much. Love you. Mm. <laughs> ditto, ditto. Hold on. Don't go away.